we read in the story of the prophets and specifically here an incident with Prophet Musa peace be upon him and Musa was to bring a delegate of his people to a specified location Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specified for him to bring his people so Allah will take the covenant from them but what happened is Musa peace be upon him came early without his people so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa and asked him what makes you come earlier than your people Musa what makes you come without your delegation without your delegate with the representatives you were supposed to come with them or to bring them with you Musa peace be upon him replied they are coming behind me they are following me Ya Rab. they are coming soon and I came here rushing seeking your acceptance Ya Rab. وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّ لِتَرْضَى I'm rushing seeking your acceptance your pleasure this concept rushing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam highlighted exactly like Moses have done all the good people do they rush in doing good things seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when there is some virtue you come first you seek your position in the front when there is a virtue when there's something to do good a believer a good believer should be on the front lines when there is something good to do no hesitation no back benches don't wait come forward repeating what Moses have said Prophet Ibrahim السلام, his grandfather Moses grandfather and our, pair, our father our grandfather Ibrahim was our example he was rushing to do things seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him to do he has done it fully with no hesitation Allah has tested Abraham with things and he has done him all perfectly completely no one has ever been tested like Ibrahim with difficulties with hardships with difficult tests and he has done it all fully he's our example so I'm rushing to you oh my Lord seeking your pleasure I'm rushing to do good deeds anything that will please you I'll be in the front when it comes to virtues and good deeds a believer is always in the front anything that will benefit people anything that will relieve people from hardships anything will make li uh, life easier you will find believers come first this is why our ancestors were leaders they led the world they provided their best technologies sciences innovations they never hesitated to gift it to the world they translated all the works of the Romans of the Greeks of the Indians and they multiplied that and they gave it to the world Andalusia in Spain it was open for Europe and for everybody to come and seek knowledge and get the best from these Muslims even the Crusades ah, 
who came to destroy the Muslims. Huh? You know what? At that, what they called it, the dark ages in Europe, it was the light time in the East. They went back, they went back with human rights. They went back with innovations. They went back with new principles. No? So, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى I'm rushing to you, my Lord, seeking your pleasure. This should be the slogan of every Muslim, every believer. This is the slogan of our Prophet Muhammad also was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything, any virtue, any good deed, huh? he was in the front. Even when at times when there is a threat, he would be the first to come and face it. Huh? So, at one day, people in Medina heard some huge explosion or something like that. And they were worried. So, by the time people took their, uh, uh, their ride, they took their horses to go and check what's going around Medina, they found that their leader, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is returning. Has already checked and come back. The Prophet ﷺ has already uh, gone and inspected the issue and came back and said, No problems, there's no issue. Must be some earthquake or whatever, no problems. So this is the leader, this is the head of the state, this is the Prophet. ﷺ. He was in the front, he was the leader. Huh? This is the slogan of the believers. They do that out of love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Musa alayhi salam could not wait. He could not wait to talk to his Lord, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Musa is the one whom Allah chose to talk to directly. No one else. Huh? But Musa alayhi salam. This is why we call him Kalimullah. Allah spoke to him direct. Allah will speak to every one of us, inshallah, in the hereafter. But now Musa got this privilege. So he couldn't wait. He was so impatient to come and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talk to him. To seek his pleasure. And this is the slogan of any believer. So loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us do the good things. Stick to what Allah is asking us to do. But this formula, my brothers and sisters, is not only that one way. It's not a one way formula. It's not that you, literally, when you know the two parts or the two sides of the equation, you will realize that lo your love to Allah is really not the most important. The more important and the more precious and the more value is in the love from Allah to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, if you turn away, if you turn back from your faith, Allah will bring a people or a group of people. يحبهم ويحبونا. He loves them and they love him. Be careful. He loves them first. Comes first. Most important. Allah loves you. Allah's love to you is more important than you love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most important that Allah loves you. And of course the key is you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah to love you is not um, impossible. It's not for messengers or saints huh? it's not for special only could be for anyone right but there are huh? there are reasons for that there are factors to bring the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is most important because you know what if Allah loves a person that person's affairs is all set in this world and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith al-Qudusi huh? that the Prophet sallallahu narrates, you know al-hadith al-Qudusi. Hadith al-Qudusi is not the Quran, 
it's not the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is it in between. The Prophet ﷺ says, Allah says, but not Quran. It's a revelation huh? in words, not in the Quran, but the Prophet ﷺ narrates it. Just like this one. Part of that. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ then my servants will continue huh, offering good deeds, extra good deeds, until I love him or her. That means doing the good deeds will bring the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who spend of what Allah gave them, people who will give up their own whims and desires for the sake of getting the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam was a young man full of desires, full of uh, uh, needs, and he gave up his own uh, desire for the sake of qala inni, uh, qala ma'adallahi innahu rabbi. He said, I fear my Lord. I fear my Lord. He gave up to do the sin for the sake of seeking Allah's pleasure. So Allah protected him and Allah raised his rank. You know what? Eventually he became uh, the ruler of Egypt or the trustee of the king and the finance minister or so. And then his brothers who conspired against him, they came to beg him for food, right? And then they asked him for forgiveness. Subhanallah. Allah's love is guaranteed for certain people. Allah's love is guaranteed for certain people. And you know what? Once the Prophet وسلم, came to one of the companions. His name is Ubay ibn Ka'b. Ubay, by the way, my brothers, is one of the famous companions. He's famous for being what? He's one of the scribes of the Quran. Huh? Ubay ibn Ka'b. Great companion. So, the Prophet ﷺ is talking to Ubay. He said, Ya Ubay, Inna Allah amarani an aqra'a alayka surat al -bayina. My Lord, commanded me to recite to you Surah al -Bayna. Ubay was overwhelmed. He said, Ya Rasulullah, all oh, the messenger of Allah, did Allah mention me to you? He said, yes. Did Allah mention my name to you? He said, yes, he did. Ubay was overwhelmed by that. Allah to mention his name. Specifically, what a status you get when Allah uh, is mentioning you. Another one. Sayyida Khadija, our mother, our beloved. Uh, Khadija al Kubra. Khadija, our mother, the wife of the Prophet, the first wife, the grand Khadija. Once the Prophet وسلم, talked to her and said, Allah is greeting you, is passing salam to you, O Khadija. Khadija is getting special greeting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, give Khadija the glad tidings of a special house in paradise. A house of gold and silver that is full of tranquility la sahaba a house of full of tranquility khadija who gave everything fi sabilillah khadija who saved nothing to support al islam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is getting the glad tidings this is another key of getting the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my brothers there is Another ayah that tells you more about the love of Allah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you truly love Allah, O oh people, 
all people, all Muslims, all believers, anyone, if you truly love Allah, follow me, then Allah will love you. Then follow the messengers. Follow your messenger. Oh, Muslims, if you truly love Allah, then follow the footsteps of your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Don't make up huh? path and ways. It's one way. It's the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Honesty. Sacrifice. Huh? Doing all the things he did. Follow him. Then you will receive the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, Christians. Oh, Jews. Oh, anyone. You should have followed your messengers. And now there is only one final messenger, so follow him. That will lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will lead you to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And gaining the love of Allah, as in the hadith, فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ And if I love him, in the hadith al-Qudusi, if Allah loves somebody, كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِي I will be uh, in, your, in your hearing, in your sight, uh, in your talk. Allah will guide you in everything. Allah will safeguard your hear, your eyes, your ears, your tongue, and everything. So you will do and hear and see the things that Allah will like you to do and see. And Allah will bless everything you do. And you stay in this world will be a nice journey. And you travel to the hereafter will be the best one. Because, you know, for believers, every stage is better than the one preceding. So your stay in this world will be better than what you had in your mom's uh, pregnancy. And your death will be better than your life. And your resurrection will be better than uh, all of them. And your end will be in paradise, which is better than them all. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never break his promise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, promised those who do good that Allah will take care of them. My brothers, finally, and to conclude, how do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you? In the hadith also, if Allah loves somebody, in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, if Allah loves someone, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا Allah will call Jibreel and he will tell Jibreel. You know, why Jibreel? Why Jibreel? Jibreel is the head of the angels. He's the head of the angels. He's the head. He's the boss. Right? So Allah sends the messages through Jibreel to the rest of the angels. And you know what the angels do? Do everything. Everything in this world, uh, there are angels who are assigned to do the tasks Allah told them to do including those angels who, do, who write our deeds those who take care of everything in this planet in other planets in the universe whatever they are Jibreel is the boss huh? so Allah will call Jibreel and he will tell him I love such and such person man or woman child or adult so Jibreel will love that person and then Jibreel will call the people of the heavens, huh? people in the heavens, angels. And he will uh, call, Allah loves such and such person, love him. And they will all love him. You know what? You know, if the angels love somebody, the angels will pray for you, as in the, in the Quran. Huh? They will pray for you as well. So you get even extras. And then, is that all? So only the people in the heavens? No, even in the people on earth. And then he will be given acceptance on earth. That's why sometimes you find people, maybe they are not too wealthy. Maybe they are not uh, having authority or whatever, but they still accepted people love them people respect them and in the opposite there are people who spend a lot of money sometimes to gain acceptance 
but they will not get it. And the moment this money or this authority goes away, they will lose all of that. There are people whom you find people follow them, support them, but the moment they lose the power or the means, no one will follow. No one will praise them. No one will respect them. Whereas some other people whom Allah gives acceptance and gives love, they will get it and they will have it. We see that. So the key is to be pious, is to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with iman and love for him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower this gathering with blessings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this land safe and peaceful and all the Muslim lands here, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salli Allahumma wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.